Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels. To discuss the intersection of telecom infrastructure and the AI revolution, including multi-cloud architectures and AI factories at the edge, I am joined by Eric Van Vliet, who is VP Telecom System Business, Sale and GTM EMEA for Dell Technologies. Hello, Eric. Really good to see you again. Uh, can we start? I'd like to ask you what you think are going to be the top three main challenges that the telco industry has got to address right now. I think, well, the top three challenges for the telcos um, haven't changed over the last couple of years. It's, I believe they're still cha much challenged with the increase of bandwidth. The driver behind that increase of bandwidth might be changing. AI is a big piece of it um, today, but it's still probably the biggest challenge they have is the increase, the continuously increase of the demands of the subscribers from traffic. I think the other two challenges um, are, are relatively new these days. Um, one is obviously different use cases that um, are demanded by the subscribers and also maybe more importantly, the enterprise usage of, of the connectivity that they deliver. Um, and the other one is talent. I think the third challenge that they really need to address now is getting the right talent um, through the door to enable them to um, deliver the use cases that, that are so uh, in demand within, the, um, within both the consumer and the, um, the enterprise space. OK, well, thanks, Eric. Well, you know, if we focus in now on this intersection between telecoms and AI, how would you say the, the secure, reliable and scalable infrastructure of telcos has enabled the development of AI use cases? So obviously, AI use cases all live around the data, the data created by their, um, their customers of the telco. I think we have a long standing history with, with, with the customers um, handling their data, starting at the beginning with voice, going towards internet, um, IP traffic. So real data, um, over, over IP, which, which then they started caching, they started securing in a regulated way, as they always have been a regulated industry has, has meant that they've built it in a very reliable infrastructure to carry that data now because of modern connectivity with mobile and, and high speed fiber connectivity we see a, a quite an, a large disaggregated network now where a lot of the pieces that drive that connectivity are distributed throughout the network and um, this is ideal for for a lot of ai use cases um, Maybe not training as we see the large language models um, mainly driven inside the data center, but uh, use cases like inferencing or small language models, um, they are ideally placed close to the data and who else is close to the data than the, the connectivity provider? They're right there, they deliver either the fiber or the wireless signal to the user, to, to, to the customer. They're never further than a couple of miles away with a, with a access point or a, a, a pop. And I think that's, that's one of the key aspects of real estate. And as I mentioned, they are a regulated industry, very hot on security and reliability. This is ideal for, for the next evolution of, of, of where we are right now with AI becoming a part of everybody's life and everybody's business. And how do you think telcos actually view this? How do you think telcos see AI technology and, and, and you know, what do, they, what do they make of the resulting AI use cases? I think AI for the telco has a, is a, is a multifaceted um, technology. Obviously, they can leverage it themselves to drive more cost optimization via investment in AI. The telcos have been, you know, on a continual cost of optimization journey throughout the last decades to, to deliver better, more reliable, but also more cost effective connectivity to its customers. So one aspect is that it, that it try, it enables them to drive costs down and modernize their network by enabling the network to become smarter and more efficient and in, in hopefully autonomous as, as, as autonomous as it can. Um, 
but also it gives them an opportunity to monetize on the connectivity. If you look back into to the last two decades, a lot of the monetization of the network actually was happened by, by over the top providers, as we know, because there was a lot of one way um, communication and uh, let's say what it is, it was media streaming was a big part of it with AI, where it's continual interaction between the customer and the AI. There's a lot more opportunity for the telco and they see that to, to find ways to monetize on the need of that continual bi-directional communication. And, and I think it's an opportunity for them to really build out the edge now, whereas before, uh, they were always looking for the edge use cases to justify the investment as we all were, were really looking for that. And AI is that use case, the data that the, the subscriber creates, the way it's handled by artificial intelligence, the way the, the telecom become, uh, let's say that digital spine for, for AI is, 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 is perfect. I think they're in a fantastic position to help us leverage AI more in our daily life enterprises as a you know, leverage AI as a business. And, and I think the Telco see it as a way to, to monetize on the usage of their connectivity. Well, let me pick up on something you just said there, um, because very recently at Mobile World Congress Doha, you described telcos as the digital spine of our connected world. What do you mean by this and, and why is this concept so important with AI? Well, if we and I mentioned this in, in Doha as well, if we think of, of intelligence um, our collective intelligence only really worked at the pace we are used to now is when we got connected. If we, if we look back 50 years ago, the evolution of technology or the evolution of medicine or any, any, any advancement that we were making, it, it was great, but it went at a, at a speed which we now would class as very slow. So, so it's, it's incredible to see how connectivity has helped our accelerate our evolution on, in any form. Um, and I think now that we're looking at artificial intelligence and we're bringing additional intelligence to, to the play and, 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 and in case it's, it's digital, right? It's artificial connecting it to not just the users, but also the uh, data creators, um, the, the, entrepreneurs who create new use cases or they create new apps. If you see how fast an application can be built, they have to all still be connected. And that's why we, it was referenced as a digital spine because we see the AI as the brain and we connect all the data that are, let's say the limbs to that brain through the spine. And that's the telco. The telco is not optional. The connectivity is mandatory, um, just as a spine towards the brain. And the, you know, the digital spine is there, is needed, and is, is really important for, for its success. It's, it's essential for its success. And same as reflexes, if you think of it that way, um, we can build in, um, let's say, behaviors of that spine related to the data to help the artificial intelligence get better at handling the data as well. And that's part of the telco opportunity um, with artificial intelligence. And as you say, the telco is not optional. So what unique advantages do telcos have when you compare them against hyperscalers or other players when it comes to becoming the backbone for AI? It's the access to the, the users, the data users and the data creators. They, that's their biggest advantage. Um, they, they have built an infrastructure that goes across a country that is not centralized, which is near the users and the creators of data. Um, and, and that's, that's their value. That's what they've built. And, I think if we look at hyperscalers, even though they might have a great opportunity to build large data centers to house a lot, the large language models and some of that artificial intelligence, without the data, without access to the data and without access to the users, it is irrelevant. So I think that's the big, big advantage that the telcos have. And they're doing a great job of continuously servicing those users, uh, investing in technologies to provide faster connectivity, more reliable connectivity. Um, and now it's time for them to build, 
to maybe prov actually provide smarter connectivity that's more than just um, a, a simple pipe, but actually adds additional intelligence to that pipe to make sure that that what we're building as a society and as, as businesses um, just keeps advancing and the momentum just keeps going when we get things like physical AI, such as the VR uh, glass capabilities, robots, autonomous cars, and so on. And um, the telco, again, is is not an option. They need, they it's not optional. They, they need to be there and they are crucial to the success of, of, of all those use cases. Without the telco, there is no way to deploy artificial AI at that scale that, that we, we'd like to see. Yeah, sure. And as you say, there's a lot still to come. And, and if we look at distributed networks, how do you see the interplay between multi-cloud architectures and the telco edge in delivering these AI services and services at scale? So the, the, the edge, and I think it was at one of your uh, previous events I mentioned, is if we, if we look at the distribution of, of compute right now within the network, mini data centers that the telcos have, have built, um, those are ideal to, to, to house also some of the um, AI let's say systems to, to do things like inferencing or other other elements around artificial intelligence. But the, the reason why this is, is, is not yet a reality today is is partly because running these distributed cloud technologies is complicated. If we're looking at multi-cloud architectures where we look at an infrastructure and see that infrastructure more than what it, what it is beyond the physical, we see it from it is a cloud. Um, First of all, not every cloud is 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 ideal for for the same use case. So so we see different clouds coming. Hence, we now have clearly a multi-cloud architecture within any network, focused some focused on connectivity, some focused on on control security, and we'll also see a multi-cloud focused on edge use cases that are delivering AI capabilities to, to the subscriber and to the enterprises. Now, without looking at your infrastructure as multi-cloud, and if we look at all those silos, it will be very hard to manage all these different clouds and more importantly, manage them at a an operational cost efficiency to, to make those use cases affordable for your subscribers. So the only real way to drive cost efficiency is start looking at your infrastructure as a multi-cloud architecture, accepting that the infrastructure is not as um, siloed as you might want to have it, because from a security and performance perspective, a silo is ideal because it's very contained. But from an operational perspective, a silo is very, very expensive and difficult to manage. So going to a full multi-cloud architecture in your infrastructure gives you the option gives you the reality that an edge cloud is just a small piece rather than a whole new silo you have to build so that's why i think multi-cloud architecture is 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 needed to drive the right cost efficiency when building out an edge well a final question to you eric because you've spoken previously about ai factories built on pre-validated infrastructure blocks but what does an ai factory look like in a telecoms context and, and why are common building blocks so important to their success? So we just mentioned multi-cloud and, and that we have different clouds for different use cases. I think AI factories at scale, we cannot buy, we cannot build AI factories for each use case. There will be a common AI factory that is leveraged by a, a telco operator to deliver both the use cases for their own network and their operations and the use cases for their customers. So without building it on, on validated building blocks, if you're not going to be able to leverage common applications or way of workings that are built for let's let's say a, an AI factory framework. If it's your own specialized framework, this means everything you do will be specialized and that's just not how we can see the advancement going. So if we're looking at a telco operator, a telco operator AI factory, um, we, we already see operators do this investing in one larger factory to run 
their own operations for the cost optimization and then looking how to extend that factory to to the field or to um to let's say aggregation points within the network but being part of that overall ai framework based on common building blocks to deliver those use cases to subscribers that's the only way we believe that you can get economy of scale as a telco to run an ai factory if you would run an ai factory for your siloed use cases internal network and then also for edge the co the cost alone and the complexity of that would just be um impossible to manage and at a, at, a, at a profitable space. So it's really important that we build AI factories based on common validated building blocks and think of it as, as, as one whole infrastructure, AI infrastructure, that we leverage for all the use cases that we see within a telco, cost optimization, network modernization, and the edge use cases for the subscribers. Absolutely fascinating. Well, we must leave it there for now, Eric. Great talking with you, as always. Thanks so much for sharing your views with us today. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here.